Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Casson Academy. In this session, we're going to talk about the difference between display remarketing and search remarketing. In the past few weeks, we've shown you how to create search campaigns, how to create display campaigns, and how to add remarketing lists. But we're going to show you today the main difference between search remarketing and display remarketing. So let's get started. Uh, when you get into your ads account, uh, whether you're in the search campaigns or the display campaigns, you're going to find an audiences tab. So your remarketing lists are always located under the audiences tab. Uh, if you don't have any audiences, there will be an add audience button. Otherwise, you'll be able to add your audience from the audience tab right here. So I'm going to start with display. Uh, display is the most common form of remarketing. Uh, most of us know how it works. You go into a website, you get added to a remarketing list. Once you're on that remarketing list as a user and you leave the website, when you go to other websites or other placements on, uh, as you're doing your uh, search for whatever product, product or service it is that you're looking for, uh, then you will be followed by a banner. And that banner might be trying to draw you back into your shopping cart, but if you don't have shopping, it might be trying to draw you back into some sort of service. And we're all quite familiar with that sort of uh, remarketing. It's quite easy. You add a display remarketing list uh, to your campaign and then Google just does the rest. You don't have to do any adjustments or anything like that just so long as you have the right to create uh, the uh, you assign a uh, remarketing list to that particular campaign uh, Google will do the rest for you. So just to show you how it works in display you go to display campaigns you go to audiences yeah, it'll show you your existing audiences you're going to click edit audiences going to choose your ad group that you want to add it to. Now, if you're doing a, a remarketing only list, in other words, you only want to target people that have been to your site and nobody else, uh, then you can leave it on targeting recommended. But if you want to use your current audiences plus your remarketing list, then you need to switch it to observation. Uh, you're going to go to the browse button and all the way down at the bottom, you're going to find remarketing. And under the website visitors, you'll have all of your lists. So because this is with some sort of other uh, re, uh, audiences, we can add the all users. You, Google will then target with your banners all your users plus your uh, regular audience that you have going. If you switch it to, sorry, if that's on observation, if you switch it to targeting, it will only target the people on these two audiences plus your remarketing list. So just keep that in mind when you're targeting. If you're wondering why you don't have any reach, it's probably because you've narrowed your audience by using targeting recommended. Uh, but if you want to broaden your audience with a much bigger reach, you can see that you can switch it to observation. Now it's your remarketing list plus your audiences, your regular targets. Okay. So you can see here it's 4 billion impressions. On this one, we're quite a bit less with 620 million impressions. Okay. So that's how you add it to display. Display is pretty straightforward. You can add your lists there. If you want it to be remarketing only, you can take away these two. And you can push save. And now this is a pure remarketing list. So if somebody's on your list, in other, in other words, they've been to your website uh, and they've been added to your remarketing list, then uh, that's the only target that would be in this campaign. There'll be nobody else in there. Uh, it's actually quite a good idea to use these if for stuff like abandoned shopping carts uh, because uh, you can make your reach a little bit broader and then you can define it down uh, after that. And the next place I'm going to show you is search remarketing. Now, search remarketing acts very differently to display remarketing. Display follows you around the internet with banners. Search changes your bid. So if I go into search campaign and I go find a campaign, let's do a test campaign here. And I click on audiences. I'm going to add an audience. Same sort of stuff exists. So you can only target your, your um, uh, remarking list, list if you want, or you can target your remarking list with your general targeting that you have, your keyword based targeting that you already have. So this is, uh, I would hardly ever use this one, uh, just remarketing. I would usually go for the observation one, and you're going to click Browse, so it's in, located in the same place. And you're going to go down to the remarketing lists, website visitors, 
all visitors. Obviously, you can use all your other remarketing lists too, but the most common one is the all visitors one. And uh, what I've noticed that when it comes to search-based remarketing, uh, broadening your list is actually a lot better than defining your list. So in display, it's great to define your list, but in search remarketing, it's generally better to uh, broaden your list afterwards. So you get them on an all users list, get as many as uh, people that you can on that list. And then when you, when you go back to your search campaign, you can actually uh, broaden your keywords even. So if you're using very long tail, very defined keywords previously, you can go in and you can say, okay, I want it to be much broader. And I only want to target the people that have been to my website. So you'd switch it to targeting, you'd broaden those keywords, and you'll target everyone that's been to your site. Why do you broaden it? Because you want all of those users that have been to your site and have left to come back in. Now, if you're only using some defined keywords in the campaign, uh, the chances of them searching that keyword again is very slim. So you sort of want to get them as they, they change their search queries, as they go and they continue hunting and they're updating their search queries. So you want to try hit them where the broader keywords are. It's the only time I'd actually recommend to use broad keywords, a uh, full broad campaign. So when you have your match types, you could use your broad based keywords and you don't have to do phrase and exact match if you're doing a remarketing only search remarketing. By the way, another uh, name for search remarketing is RLSA. So it's remarketing list for search ads. Uh, so you'll see that uh, will be another way that people do mention these lists. Okay, so here we're gonna say save all users. Now you're gonna see, uh, obviously this list is too small because it's been off for a long time. The way that uh, Google does the search remarketing is it uses something called a bid adjustment. So if you're playing, let's call it one rand for a click, and you're in position three or four, uh, somebody comes to your website, they get added to your remarketing list. They leave your website and they go back to Google. So the main difference is they're going back to perform a Google-based search. So if they're still looking for uh, drones for hire, they're still making a search query. They're still searching. They're back in Google. They're not on somebody else's site. So when they came into your site under that uh, particular word first, you've added them to a remarketing list. They go back to Google and they continue to search. So now they're going to say drones for hire near me as an example. Now you can adjust your bid to be more aggressive when they research. So if they, if they search again, you can be more aggressive. So this is what they call a bid adjustment. If you were paying one rand, you can come in here and say, I want to pay 40% more than that one rand. So now you're paying four rand for that particular click. That will help so when they come back and do a search again, if you're in position number four, maybe you're now in position number two or position number one. I highly suggest that if you use bid adjustments, you don't use anything under 40%. You can be very aggressive. So for example, they've come to your site, you know that they, they, they want your product or they've seen your product. You can go as much and say, this time, when he goes back to the search engine and he searched, I'm, I'm willing to pay double. I wanna be more aggressive this time. So your one rand will now become two rand or your 10 rand will become 20 rand. So you can get a lot more aggressive on your increase and your chances as he starts to research. Now you can see why uh, when you do a bid adjustment, you want your broader keywords to start to catch them. So the person most likely is not going to search exactly the same. Yes, he could be going down the list. So he says drones for hire. He could be going down the list and saying, okay, not this one. I'm going to go to this one, not this one. I'm going to go to this one and eventually get into the organics. But a lot of users will change their query and they might add a location to it, which means that you want to try catch them with a much broader reach. Uh, that you can to bring them back into that campaign. Now, as your statistics come in, it's going to tell you how many people, how many people are caught in this remarketing list. So uh, you don't have to do a bid adjustment. You can see what sort of people would have qualified for your uh, remarketing list. So in the beginning, if you're not too sure to uh, how much to bid adjust, just uh, leave it at zero. So no bid adjustment and allow it to get impressions and clicks 
And then when you start to see how many people are on your list, how many people are utilized, then you can say, okay, now I want to be more aggressive on that search remarketing list. Uh, and that's basically search, and, and uh, it can be used both ways. So you can also do negative remarketing lists. In other words, if somebody has already added uh, a product to their, their um, cart and they've already purchased that product, you can come into your search remarketing and say, okay, I'm going to bid adjust you as a decrease now, and I want you 100% off for those people that already purchased that product. Um, so just remember that most remarketing lists can go both ways. So display remarketing follows you around with banners. Search re remarketing adjusts your bid and allows you to be more aggressive in the search queries. So here, when somebody's searching or researching and, and defining their, their, their search, you can be more aggressive. You can run all day in position number four, but now he's been to your site, you can jump all the way up to position number one. It helps you as a small advertiser go up against the really big guys that have large budgets. You don't want to keep your large budget all day long. You want to be able to strategize and, and use that budget when it's more likely that you're going to get a lead. So if that person has gone and researched and, and you keep coming up at the top, now there's a good chance that you can get them back into your website and back into your shopping cart and back to purchase. And that's basically how search remarketing works. Um, and that's it for today's session. So it's a nice short session, but it just explains the main differences between your remarketing lists. And now you can go and add them to your campaigns. Just one note though, if you go to your display campaign and you're trying to add a remarketing list and there is nothing there. So let's go take this campaign as an example. Uh, I'm going to go into the ad group itself. I'm gonna say, okay, now I'm gonna add an audience and look, there's no audience. Why would there be no audience? It's because this is a smart display campaign. Smart display campaigns do not use audiences. They are automatic. So just remember it needs to be a standard display campaign in, audience, uh, in order for the audience to actually show up. Okay. So if you go to audiences now, you can see them here because it is a standard uh, display campaign. And that's it for this session. We'll catch you again next week. Thanks.